What's up guys, it's Dan here, and I'm bringing you my first long form video on goal setting. Uh, over the holidays, went home for Christmas, uh, back to Canada. Sorry to hold you up, let him go. And read a couple books and consumed a lot of YouTube content, specifically on motivation and planning and goal setting. So I'm compiling all of that information and to this one kind of, of my own strategy philosophy. And in my opinion, there's, there's a lot of value in this. I think if you've got some time, you should save this and come back and slip off into a room with a notebook or whatever and take some notes because it's some pretty good stuff. Take notes, boys. So with that being said, it's January 15th, uh, recording this right now. So it's, uh, it's never too late to start, you know? Never too late to start a goal. Let's get right into this video. So there's a couple different categories people often classify their goals into. You look at your health category, you look at personal, and you look at financial. Health, you know, your, your body, fitness, diet, stuff pertaining to your health. Uh, personal could be things with spirituality, time with God, family, spending more time with them, friends, or even personal goals. I wanna to learn to dance. You know, something like that. And then financial can be, of course, monetary. Your own business, your side hustle goals, or maybe your main day job and getting raises and salaries and climbing your way up the ladder at your company. So this strategy that I'm about to show you applies to any category. The information can go between any of them. And myself as an engineer, uh, I'm going to reverse engineer a lot. You're gonna do what? And that's how I'm gonna start this off because what we look at first is a results-based goal. You know, you set a goal typically in a manner which you may have heard before with the SMART goals. What's a SMART goal? As I'm sure you may have heard of it, but I'll throw it up on the board. All right, so there is all sorts of information all over the internet on setting SMART goals. If you wanna know a bit more about this, you can easily YouTube, search it or Google it and it comes up everywhere. You're looking at basically a series of criteria that's a very smart way to frame your results-based goal, being something specific, something measurable, something attainable, something realistic or relevant, and, and time bound. Now, in my opinion, it's fairly easy to classify your goal into these buckets, into this criteria. The hardest part then is achieving it. What's, you can set a goal like this, but, but how do you achieve it? And setting a goal like this can sometimes mess you up in how you focus. I can't focus again. So setting a goal, a smart goal like this, results-based is one thing, but achieving it is another. So for example, let's say we set a results-based goal and it's for 2023, it's for a year from now. And this is you here. And you wanna to get to your goal. Now shift your mind a little bit and pretend this is the map. This is the USA. Where's America? I would say this big one, but I'm probably wrong. Canada's ooh, way up here, you know? And you've got to hop in your car and you're gonna to drive to your goal this year. And you know it's northeast, and that's the direction you need to go, but you can't actually see you know, your goal because it's thousands of miles away. There's mountains in the way, there's curves in the road and whatnot and different directions and roads and places you need to go. So maybe you're trying to get there this year and you know that's the direction you need to be going and then oh you got to go through the pass but oh it's closed so you come back this way and then there's oh dead end over here and then you get sidetracked you run out of gas and then oh you end up in florida on the beach for a minute and chilling here and then come back up and end of the year you only are about halfway there you were focused on getting there and you were directionally trying to move that way but you didn't have a system to get you there and that's a little bit of the basis of this strategy is reverse engineering basically your results based goal timeline wise and information wise into something manageable 
And then when you're managing that, it becomes one of, you know, you could call it three different things. What you really want to be focusing on is process-based goals or an action plan or good habits that will drive you to your results-based goals. Focusing on what's happening here to carry you there. An example of this would be like for health, going to the gym or for trying to lose weight. You're trying to lose 40 pounds. No, you lose weight and then you put back on weight and then you... And you got a smart goal with it, right? It's time bound, it's you know attainable, it's measurable, it's specific and you're focusing so much on the specificity of like the numbers of it. You're hopping on the scale and off the scale every day and one day you're happy and one day you're sad and, and then you get frustrated and whatnot and you're on this roller coaster of emotions focused around the numbers. Whereas if you put your attention and your focus, not on the scale, not on the numbers, but on the day by day, if you made the, the thought process to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I go to the gym, I hop on the treadmill, no matter what, I'm on there for an hour, and then I cut out some fast food and I just focus on that. And sure enough, you know, two, three months go by and boom, you've dropped 15, 20 pounds, right? That's an example of kind of focusing on your day day manageable things to drive you towards your end base results. Now, another reason, another thing you have to think about that's commonly talked about along with the SMART goals is like your why. What's your reason why? 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 <laughs> Everyone talks about that. What drives you? What's the pleasure you will attain reaching this, the reward that motivates you to go? And that's a great thing to focus on. But another thing that not many people talk about is what if you fail? What, what if you don't make it there? What if you like, what if you end up here? How will you feel? And you can use some of that fear of failure or that fear of not making it, you know, to help push you and help motivate you too. That can, that can also be helpful. So the way I do this, right? Like I mentioned is I take the end results based goal and I break it down and then come up with my action plan based off that and I, and I first start out on the computer and I build a spreadsheet and it looks like this. So first, just to get my mind thinking in the reverse engineering, I, you know, I go on spreadsheet, usually Google Sheets, you can do it on Excel too, and I put in the yearly goal for every year. I actually usually go out five years as well. And I break that down to what that monthly is, you know, this cell divided by 12. Get your monthly number, right? Then I get what my daily number is, what it is every day. Oftentimes, uh, I'll, do, I'll do the weekly as well. That's not a bad idea to do too. Um, and then once I have those numbers written out there, then I go in and I write out my action plan habits. These are usually specified towards the first year. So the first year goals, that daily goal, whether it's a number for finance or a number for your weight or whatever it may be, that daily goal, I write out the different habits and action plans I can take that'll get me there. And I'll elaborate more on this later. And then here on the right side of this line, I'll write out what I'm doing currently for like January, the month we're in right now. And then I'll continue that on over month by month. Because after I finish this, then what you want to do is a principle written out by another great book called Think and Grow Rich. Awesome book, Napoleon Hill. He did this very long, intensive, crazy study. So much effort went into this book, uh, interviewed tons of different people. And basically what it is is a collaboration of 500 self-made millionaires, a study on them and kind of what what was the common ground behind that what made them successful and a large part of it is goals and a huge part of the book is on subconscious thinking and desire and and things like that it's a very interesting book i highly recommend it but a big part about it is writing out your statement and writing it out on writing out what that results-based goal is the time that you will achieve it in and your plan to achieve it and you kind of take your action plan and summarize it into one to three sentences. 
in that statement that you have to write out. Now write this on a nice piece of paper or even on, you know, I got an extra poster board, whatever. Um, and it's something that you're gonna look at, you're gonna try to look at it twice a day and read it out. It's really, really important. And this goal that you write out on that, you might think, well, I've got tons of different goals, what do I pick, you know? And you can do one for each category, right? That's fine. You don't wanna blow it up too big, you really wanna focus. It's like, think about what's the first goal or what's the big goal that will help the other goals. So like, for example, if I was making more money, would that then help me more in having time with my family if I was financially free, et cetera, something like that. So it's part of you know, the 80-20 principle, least amount of effort, more results. So you're gonna write that out on that piece of paper, right? And then you're gonna look at it, read it out loud if you can, like I said, twice a day. And then there's this other thing you can do uh, by one of the YouTubers I was researching into, Dan Locke, and he does this thing called smell the leather. It's like the smell, there's a smell, there's a... And what he does, he tries to physically experience a portion of his dreams or of his goals. So what he'll do, for example, if you, you know, you like nice cars and your goal is to buy a nice, nice car, just go to the dealership and just test drive it, you know? Don't go there with the intention of buying it. Just go there and test drive it. And then, you know, maybe three months later or six months later, you know, reward yourself, go there and just, you know, test drive it again. Maybe go to a different dealership so they don't think you're crazy, but it's something where you kind of live your life as if your dreams are already true and you let reality catch up to you. <laughs> and lastly, is it's very good to share your goals with someone that you really trust. You know, have a little bit of an accountability partner. Look, Frank, you're my partner, man. That's another big part about it. So now I'm gonna follow this up with more information on kind of motivation and how you can kind of keep going on these action place goals, on these habits. Maybe you've got it written out now. Now, just a little bit more information on how you can keep going. So James Clear in Atomic Habits talks about the four laws of habit formation. And an important part about them is cue, craving, response, and reward. So what you wanna do for a good habit is you wanna make it obvious. You wanna make the cue to do it obvious. Craving, you want to make it attractive. Uh, response, you want to make it easy. And reward, you want to make it satisfying. So that is how you kind of can frame a habit. And there's more detail on that. I highly recommend the book on different strategies you can do to maximize those different cues or those different craving or different responses or different rewards. But you want to do the opposite then for bad habits that are going to pull you away from your goal. You wanna make the cues invisible. You wanna make them unattractive. You wanna make it difficult. And you wanna make them not satisfying. If you reduce friction with your new action plan and goals and increase friction with your bad habits, then you will definitely um, be moving forward a lot better. So another thing you can do Another good tip from the book is called habit stacking. So you'll take one of your good habits and you'll stack it right behind one of the habits that you already currently do, whether it's a neutral habit or whatever it may be. Maybe it's brushing your teeth and you're brushing your teeth and then right after you finish brushing your teeth, you go right into five minutes of meditation. You think about something you're grateful for, you think about something you want for the day and you focus on your breathing for a couple minutes and just reset for ready, getting ready for your day. Just continue your meditation. You'd always stack that behind brushing your teeth and then it's easy. You know after you brush your teeth, you know what to do. Now, another good one to keep going is to really celebrate your milestones, you know? Use small rewards to keep yourself motivated. What is immediately rewarded is often repeated. You can come up with all sorts of different ways on things that you like to sprinkle them in to reward yourself, you know? If you're, one of your goals is to read a book every certain amount, you know, you could do something after every time you read a chapter or read 10 pages, you know, you give yourself a chocolate covered raisin or, a, you know, a, a sweet or something like that, you know? Keep yourself going. Now, there's something you may get to a couple months into the year that you may get frustrated by being that you're following all these action plans, good habits, and you're feeling pretty good about them for the most part, but you don't feel like you're getting any closer to your goal. 
you know, you feel like you're, you're just running on a slippery slope. You know, you don't feel like any of your work's going anywhere. Now, this is a common concept that we call crossing the plateau of latent potential. And a good analogy for it is think of an ice cube, you know? And an ice cube's at, say it's at 10 degrees Fahrenheit for Americans. So we're at 10 degrees Fahrenheit and all this work's being put in and, you know, potential energy, you know, I'm getting into some physics. This physics book is really dense. And, and whatever, heating up this ice cube. And the ice cube goes from 10 degrees all the way up, you know, 20, 25 degrees. Nothing changes about the look of the ice cube. It still looks just like an ice cube, you know? And then finally, after all this work gets put in, it gets 32 degrees and the ice cube starts to melt rapidly. And, you know, this could be similar to all your work put in moving towards your goal. It may seem like your work's not going anywhere, but it's storing, it's compiling, it's often compounding until finally you get your breakthrough and you hit your goal. And people will say all of a sudden, oh, he's an overnight success. He's an overnight success, never had a damn fight in his life. You know, blah, blah, blah. But they don't understand all the work you put in behind the scenes. It's very similar to the ice cube melting strategy. So anyway, interesting point. Now, what you also want to think about doing is framing your goals a little differently. You want to frame your goal not as I want this, but I am this, if that makes sense. You almost make it more part of your identity. You don't say, I want to lose 20 pounds. You say to yourself, I am an extremely healthy, fit individual, you know? And then every choice you make is a vote on whether or not that action brings you closer or not to your goal. Now questions you might want to ask yourself setting your goals are like specifically what are the steps that you need to take step by step you know what do I need to do to get that raise if your goal is a financially you know at your job to have a raise well do I need to upgrade myself do I need to learn some skills make myself more valuable to my employer so that it's inevitable that I need to have a raise maybe that's what you need to do you here to give me a raise let's take a walk a lot of goals may start like that with an aspect of education and self-learning. I've been learning tons lately and you know there's so much areas you can learn from right now. There's so many free online courses, there's tons of information on YouTube as I've already talked about a bunch and there's obviously books and audibles cheap you know and you can just consume while you're driving and really upgrade yourself learning all these things. There's just so much information out there it's amazing. And you know, everything starts small. You know, you start, you build up that base, baby steps, you know, Amazon, Facebook, they all start in like a small garage or a small office or whatever, you know, and then they scale. Like, what do you need to do to scale? After you learn and you scale more, who do you need to know? That's another great question to ask. What are the resources that are available to me that will help me to get where I need to go? Now, this is huge with getting to know people, you know, networking with something that will, a group of people or an area or new people that will push you maybe towards where you need to be. You may meet someone like who I may call a, a super plug, an SP is what we call them. I, for example, ended up connecting in with an old friend who really is now a total super plug. He's a gangster, Francis and learning a ton about digital marketing and I think it's going to be huge for my future. If you've got any questions about digital marketing, hit me up. Anyway, drawing a blank there, but uh, you just really want to think about, you know, am I always doing the things I'm good at or am I really upgrading myself in areas that I'm weak too? How could you incorporate that? Now, I have been probably talking pretty fast. There's a lot of stuff in here that I kind of randomly rambled on about. But I really hope some of it was helpful to you. I hope you really do take time to sit down and, and plan out a little bit. And if you need help with any of it, let me know. I'd be happy to just connect up with you, chat, talk, help, whatever. And uh, anyways, that's about it. It's late. I'm going to bed. Well, I'm, I'm going to bed now. <laughs>